Super Mario and Nintendo were about to kill off Donkey Kong forever, and we're gonna tell you all the secrets of this epic battle. But first, get comfortable, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on the notifications. And as a reward, you'll get a mini Mario for free. Here you have the 25 secrets of Mario vs. Donkey Kong. Mario vs. Donkey Kong was born on the Game Boy Advance, but its real origin goes back to two older Nintendo games. The first is Donkey Kong for the Game Boy, which was basically the same but in black and white. The other is even older and is the original Donkey Kong arcade game where Jumpman had to rescue Pauline by climbing scaffolding. Mario and Donkey Kong look incredible in the game scenes, and this increase in quality compared to other Nintendo Switch games has a good reason. Nintendo Pictures, the subsidiary responsible for working on Nintendo movies and animation series, created these videos. So now you know who to thank for such an audio-visual spectacle. If you play multiplayer in story mode, the second player will play as Toad, and the levels will be slightly different. In addition to the main goal, one of the players will also have to find a silver key to beat the level. And that's not the only difference with a single player game. Toad is much more skilled at climbing up a rope and will ascend faster than Mario. If Mario grabs two ropes at the same time, he'll be able to climb at the same speed. A reference to how the player can climb in Donkey Kong Jr. The confrontations against Donkey Kong keep a reference to the classic Donkey Kong arcade game, playing the same start song as in the classic game's levels. <laughs> Also, in the start menu, you can hear a part that includes the main theme of Donkey Kong Country. The Mario vs. Donkey Kong version for Nintendo Switch includes two exclusive worlds that incorporate mechanics that wouldn't have worked well in Game Boy Advance. The first one is sliding on ice, while the second is the air currents. The last one is the teleportation boxes that appeared for the first time in Super Mario 3D Land. The amusement park seen in the background of World 6 is the same as in the game Mario vs. Donkey Kong Mini Land Mayhem for Nintendo DS. Charles Martinet Super Mario was the voice of Super Mario until Kevin Afghani took over. Mario vs. Donkey Kong for Nintendo is the last completely new Mario game for which Martinet lent his voice. And Kevin Afghani debuted as Mario in Super Mario Bros. Wonder, which was released much earlier than Mario vs. Donkey Kong. This means that Mario vs. Donkey Kong was in advanced development or even finished before the launch of Super Mario Bros. Wonder in 2023. Many of the enemies in Mario vs. Donkey Kong come from the Mario universe, and others are actually completely new. There's one quite special one called Snapjaw that comes from the classic arcade machine game Donkey Kong Jr. If Toad or Mario's appearance in Mario vs. Donkey Kong looks familiar, it's because some of the art appearing in certain places in the game belongs to other Nintendo games. For example, Toad's art comes from Mario Party Superstars, Mario's art comes from Mario Party Star Rush, and some audio clips of Donkey Kong come from Mario Party 8. The first world after completing the game for the first time is Mario's Toy Factory. And if you pay attention to the background of the screen, you'll see the assembly process of the mini Marios. The toads that Mario has enslaved in the factory wear an outfit from the game Super Mario Maker 2 where some toads who build levels wear it. In Mario vs. Donkey Kong for Game Boy Advance, the toads wore their normal clothes. If you want Mario vs. Donkey Kong to be even easier, there is a relaxed mode. If you die in this mode, Mario will become a bubble and will be saved while floating through the stage. The possibility of Mario saving himself inside a bubble dates back to Super Mario Bros. Wii, where players could save each other by breaking their bubbles. 
Mario vs. Donkey Kong started out as a project called Donkey Kong Plus, a spiritual sequel to the Game Boy's Donkey Kong that was going to have a level editor as its main new feature. Players could create their own stages by placing elements on the screen. Eventually, however, this function was discarded due to its complexity. At the beginning of the game, Donkey Kong is watching TV, and for a moment, a shy guy appears giving the news. In the Nintendo Switch version, it only makes its strange sounds. But in the Game Boy Advance version, it's a distorted human voice. Someone claims to have deciphered this message, and it seems to be an excerpt from a Canadian news report about pharmaceutical products. <laughs> There are several ways to beat the levels in Mario vs. Donkey Kong, but all of them are very restricted. If you've ever wondered why you can't move Mario like in his platform games, or why you can't break the levels, it's because the game is made on a grid. It was more evident on the Game Boy Advance, and this is why there are also situations where you can see objects practically floating in the air. If you listen carefully to Donkey Kong's voice in the game, it probably sounds familiar from other games like Mario Kart or Tropical Freeze. But in the original game, Donkey Kong was not our Donkey Kong. Composer Grant Kirkhope voiced Donkey Kong on the Nintendo 64, and his sounds were reused in Mario vs. Donkey Kong. Oddly though, in some of the TV commercials, Donkey Kong's voice was the one we currently know, belonging to Nakashi Nagasako. Nintendo and Universal have amusement parks together now, but at one point in history, they were enemies in a massive legal battle that almost ended with Nintendo in the trash and Donkey Kong in jail. Donkey Kong's name was set after the King Kong movie, which was about a giant gorilla that took a damsel in distress to the top of a building and an officer had to go save her. Does it sound familiar? The Mario vs. Donkey Kong games are based on this event from the King Kong movie, and after a massive lawsuit filed by Universal and the entire video game industry against it, Nintendo won the case, didn't have to sacrifice Donkey Kong, and was saved thanks to lawyer John Kirby, whose name then became that of the pink Nintendo character. The moment when Donkey Kong falls from the building is not like in the movie. It's not even like in the Game Boy Advance game. To make it a bit softer on Nintendo Switch, Donkey Kong falls relatively placidly onto a toy truck and doesn't break his neck as in the Game Boy Advance. He also doesn't cry at the end of the game and just feels frustrated and angry for not being able to beat Mario and having to wait for Smash Bros to whack him good. Mario vs. Donkey Kong is one of the few Super Mario games not made in Japan. The American subsidiary was actually in charge of making Mario vs. Donkey Kong for Nintendo Switch, and interestingly, it was also in charge 20 years ago of making the original version on the Game Boy Advance. When Mario is running forward and turns around with a jump, he will do a somersault that makes him reach even higher. This movement originates from the Super Mario 64 game on Nintendo 64. In addition to some scenes being much more friendly on Nintendo Switch than on the Game Boy Advance, the game itself is also simpler. Multiplayer mode makes things much easier, and if you play a level and then exit it, no lies will be deducted from the player. If Mario picks up a hammer to defeat enemies, this music will play. The sound comes from the original Donkey Kong arcade game, which made Mario wipe out everything to the rhythm of this tune. This hammer has become very famous in the Nintendo universe, because although it belongs to the Mario vs. Donkey Kong saga, it has appeared in a bunch of other games, the most important of which is Super Smash Bros. <laughs> There are 12 exclusive levels that stayed on Game Boy Advance forever, and the Nintendo Switch version doesn't have them. They were accessed through a device called eReader, which allowed reading cards to unlock content in different games. If you complete all the story mode levels, including part 2 and the extra levels, a silver star will appear on the game profile. When you beat all the levels with 3 stars, the star will turn golden. If you're wondering what happens when you complete the whole game, including the time trial levels with the highest score, something very Nintendo happens. 
Nothing. The absolute nothingness will be the reward for this immense feat. But hey, at least it serves to show off stars on your YouTube channel. Subscribe so you won't miss our next feats and check out the rest of the videos on Super Mario Secrets and Company. Thanks for watching. See you next time.